All right, um, T distributions versus a standard score. So when do we use the T distribution as opposed to when do we use a Z score? And it ultimately comes down to this. Um, to use a standard score, the data has to be normally distributed. You have to have sample sizes above 30, and you have to have the population standard deviation. And I probably have screwed up on a couple of my previous videos by not saying that we're assuming that we know the population standard deviation and swapping an S instead of a sigma and things like that. And I apologize for that. But there, that is the reason for a T distribution is when, and this is what happens, I think, in most cases that I deal with, and not that I deal with a bunch of these, but um, when you deal with these, a T distribution, like on the left there, we'll go back to the ball bearing example. On the left, we have, you know, a dozen or so ball bearings in, held in my hand. And on the right, we have, you know, looks like, you know, 30 or 40. You know, who knows? And so on the left, we're probably going to use a T distribution. On the right, we're probably going to use a standard score or Z score. So to use a T distribution, you can't have, uh, you have uh, sample spaces less than, um, less than 30 and you do not know the population standard deviation so we're gonna get our standard deviation it'll be a sample standard deviation and we're gonna get it straight from that small sample that we have alright so there's the formula for the confidence interval for this situation and below I have a t-distribution table again you could go online and probably find something better but we're going to use the table beans us there. Um, so here's an example. So 10 randomly selected ball bearings were measured. We found the diameters to be 2, 2.5, 2.48, 2.52, 2.53, 2.56, 2.55, 2.50, 2.54, 2.59, and 2.54 centimeters. Find the 95% confidence interval of the mean diameter. And so if you look at my, uh, let me slide this over just a little bit. If you look at my picture, I've got more than 10 there, but um, hopefully you get the picture. So let's go back to our formula. So here it is, X bar. So we're going to have to find, this represents, again, kind of decoding this, this represents the mean. So we'll go find the mean of those 10, 10 ball bearings. Okay, S stands for standard deviation of our sample. N is 10 in our case. And so, you know, the only difference between the two is on the left we're going to subtract, and on the right, oh, <laughs> I have a mistake. That should be add. So on the right you'd add, and on the left you'd subtract. So I did make a mistake there. So uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and figure this thing out. So. You know, if I had a fancy, uh, fancy uh, calculator, if you've got a calculator that figures these out for you, please use it, because that's what I did. I used the TI-84, but you can probably use any online statistics calculator or your cell phone, whatever you've got handy. And when you do it, and when you plug all those numbers in, and you calculate and you find the mean, we find the mean to be... 2.521 for this situation. We find our standard deviation, which I'll call S sub X, as 0 0.038. And uh, you know some other data, some other information we're going to need for this is because because I don't we don't know that this is this data might be skewed, for all I know. And so we want to make sure it's normally distributed. So I'm going to use the Pearson index. And if you remember from a previous video, um, the Pearson index, let me extend that, is equal to 3 times x bar minus the median divided by the standard deviation, s sub x. And so let's do that first. Let's, let's calculate the Pearson's index. As long as we're between negative 1 and 1, we're okay, and we don't have any more than 2, 2 or more, uh, outliers. So we'll also need the outliers formula just to make sure this is normally distributed. 
So first off for the Pearson index. So this is kind of the first check for normalcy. So we're going to use 3 times my x bar which is 2.521. Also with my calculator I found out my mean was 2.525 divided by my standard deviation of 0 0.038. And when you calculate all that out, my Pearson index is a negative 0 0.316. 0 0.316. So that's a good thing. Uh, as long as I didn't make a mistake there, we're okay. This is not skewed data. Okay. The other thing we need to check for is uh, any outliers. So my quartile one, and again, I just checked it with a calc. I found these with a calculator. Is 2.5. My median, obviously, quartile two was 2.52. Uh, five, excuse me, and my quartile three is 2.54. So I'm going to calculate now my um, any see if there's any outliers. So to find out outliers, you take your interquartile range, which in our case would be Q3 minus Q1. So I interquartile range would be 2.54 minus 2.5 which is 0 0.04. And what we're going to do is take quartile 1 minus 1.5 times that IQR, that interquartile range. So in our case, um, and look for anything below that value. And so our quartile 1 is 2.54 minus 1.5 times 0.04, oh excuse me, I screwed that up. Our quartile one is just 2.5. Okay, minus 1.5 times 0.04. And uh, what we get there is 2.44. So we need to make sure that there's not anything less than 2.44. So we go back to my original data. Ah, uh, we got a 2.46, that one's close. But we're okay. No outliers going to the left. Now we'll check it going to the right. And checking it going to the right. Now you use the third quartile. So 2.54. And we're going to add the 1.5 times the interquartile range. And when you do that, you get uh, 2.60. And so if you check again your data, 2.60. Uh, the closest I have is a 2.59. Gosh, it's almost like I made this data up. And uh, you'll find out that it does not have any outliers. This is exciting. So we have somewhat normally distributed data. We can assume it's normal. So then um, we go ahead and plug into our formula for T-score. And what we need to do then, we've got pretty much everything we need with the X bar here and the standard deviation, but we also need to find this t-score. And so it asks for a 95% confidence interval. And what we need to know is this stuff off to the left, which is called degrees of freedom. And this degrees of freedom tells us which column we're going to go on. In our case, to find degrees of freedom, and I'll go to a blank page here, I'm just going to use a df you take your sample size minus one. So in our case, our degrees of freedom is 10 minus one, which is nine. So that's pretty simple. So we'll go find that. Let me hit pause for just, and I'm back. And we have degrees of freedom, I said was nine. It's hard to see because it's kind of blurry. So we'll slide across here at the nine and go to my 95% confidence interval. Whoops, I went too far, which would be this one right here. And uh, wow, that is hard to see. But I'm thinking that's 2.28. 2.28, and I will double check that. Uh, 9. Let's see, 9. Nope, I was wrong. It's 2.62. It's the one above it. <laughs> My picture is pathetic, so 2.262 is what I what we need, 2.262. If you actually go to a table and do this yourself, you'll be able to see. I, when I took the picture, it's kind of wavy, 
because I was just taking a picture of a book. So 2.62 is my T score. And so now we're ready to rock and roll with this thing. So what we do then is you do your X bar, which we know my X bar to be 2.521 uh, minus your T score. Okay, so 2.521 is my mean minus my T, T score that I found, my T distribution score that I found for a degree of freedom of 9 and, uh, and a 95% confidence interval. And so divided by, and then you have standard, your standard deviation divided by the square root of n, which is 10, is less than mu, is less than, same thing, but a plus sign, 2.521, plus your mac, basically your maximum error again is what we're finding, 2.262 times the same thing, 0 0.038, divided by the square root of 10. And then I'll let you plug that in, but what you're going to find basically is on the left we're going to have 2.49 is less than mu is less than 2.55. So we are 95% confident that... Um, that our population mean falls between 2.49 and uh, 2.55. Okay. Um, given our 10 samples. Okay, so essentially that's what we have. I mean, we're 95% confident that those ball bearings are going to be between the mean of all the ball bearings, our entire population out of our sample, is going to be between 2.49 and 2.55. Again, that's if we randomly selected 10 of them and every ball bearing had the same chance of being picked. So, you know, there's a lot of things you need to be careful of when you're doing this. You don't just take 10 off the top. Uh, you know, if you got a vat of 1,000, you're not going to pick up the top 10 because they're easy to get to. Uh, you need to come up with some sort of system to, so that every single ball bearing has an ch equal chance of being picked, even the ones at the bottom. So, there you have it. And uh, I hope this helps with T distributions and what to do when you don't have very much information to go on. So best of luck and see you next time.